We are here at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in St. Michael's, Maryland. It's 18 acres outdoors on the waterfront. It's experiential, it's interactive. There's something for everybody. You can't come to the Maritime Museum without having some level of learning, education, and appreciation for how fragile and important the Chesapeake Bay is to all of our livelihood. Female. That's, a female. Yeah. That's right, it's she's a female tribe. She's gonna go quick. Ooh. She goes. These guys might be too big to. Oh, he's big. Ooh. He's a big one. He's a big guy. Ooh, yeah, he's, he's probably guy. about three, four years old. That's about Goodness as gracious. big as they get. The Chesapeake Bay is actually an estuary. It's about 180 miles long. Technically, this is called the Miles River, which opens up to the complete Chesapeake Bay. The shipyard is the star of the show. We have the world's largest collection of Chesapeake boats. All these boats right behind me, 1912, 1931, these are all historic, authentic vessels. And the shipyard's primary job is to maintain all of these vessels. This is an ongoing, living, breathing system. The town of St. Michael started really as a shipbuilding town, and it had a wonderful run of doing that. But after the War of 1812, the shipbuilding industry died. And after the Civil War, technology changed St. Michael's. One of them is a skipjack. These are oyster dredgers. So the Chesapeake Bay is filled with oysters. And they were taking them out a few at a time by tonging, like a little, like a scissors. The oyster dredgers could get hundreds and hundreds of oysters from the bottom of the bay and bring them in. So all of a sudden, they had this bounty. So that was the first technology. So what I have here is a pair of oyster tongs. Now, these are sort of made for the museum. They're a lot smaller than what you find on a boat. OK. Because our oyster bed is right out here off the dock. Oh, wow. Okay. Send it down right down to the, to the Send bottom. Send it down. That's right. OK. And open them up. This way? The other, yeah. That, put your hands that way. That's right. Got it. Open them up and kind of rake them in. I feel like I'm go, not getting anything. Put them straight. There we go. OK. Now hold it, hand, and bring them up. Hand over hand. Keep coming. Keep oh, coming. Girl. Keep coming. Oh, no! They fell. You that ever, was close. You ever been in an amusement park where you, you yeah. put the quarter in the machine? Yeah. That's that what was like. that. That's what that was, was exactly at. that. Okay, let's try it again. Keep coming. Keep coming. Oh, I think I probably dropped the money one. What'd you get? Look at your treasure. It's just shells. Well, wait a minute. There's oysters on that. Woo! You got oysters. Woohoo! Now, that's called a cult. That's how oysters grow. They all oh. grow together in a clump. Nice, yes. But you have you have oysters. You have about one, two, maybe three oysters on Oh, that's cool. Yes! Look at me with the oysters! That's right. That's right. I'll see you later for dinner. OK. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they would dredge the oysters. They'd bring them to a packing house. They would shuck the oysters. They'd put them in a gallon can, seal it, put it on ice, they put it on a train, it would go to New York, Chicago, Philadelphia. So the whole oyster business exploded. And so St. Michael's had this renaissance of seafood harvesting and packing and so forth. And then we had a problem. The oyster population declined significantly, and this campus here was not good business. So the Historical Society of Talbot County started to acquire historic buildings, which are part of the museum now. And in 1965, they opened the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. It's funny, you'd say, well, why do you go to a museum? And I answer that in one word, fun. <laughs>